Are you still going up to Blackhawk? Well, I don't have any. This, this is true. A lot of guys get hooked on going up there. They love the atmosphere up there, but I care less about that. And the trip up there, I'm constantly, boy, I'm hyper going up there driving like you wouldn't believe. Because I've, I've seen it four or five different wrecks going up there and back. Yeah. Curves are just like this. And boy, you know, and I don't know why they all drive so damn fast going and coming. And up there, well, uh, all the run of the mill crowd up there is just uh, working still, you know. And lower, you know, you're not, you're not gonna find a mayor up there or anybody like that. You yeah. Know. Uh, I don't care that much for it, but it's like the dog track. I I got to where I could beat it after many years of losing, but. Uh, I was never hooked on going out there. I just wanted to make money. I got down to where I only went to one race a week. That was a Saturday, late Saturday night. And I got I got to where I could almost beat it yeah. anytime I wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had to, I had to keep <clears throat> myself in range. So I always, if I suddenly shot for four or 5,000 on one race, they had their own little uh, mafia. They had a few boys that played seriously, and they were getting to me. Uh -huh. And I knew it was going to end up bad, so I cut out from them. Yeah. There's a black boy, I tell you, one of the best friends I ever had. We got in, he bet entirely differently from the way I did, but I'd listen to him and he'd listen to me. And one time there, out of eight dogs that were running, <clears throat> there was four underdogs and then four dogs that just so-so, you know, and, uh, we bet on the four underdogs. They came in and they they flashed up on a screen out there as to uh, uh, how much uh, the worth of a dog percentage wise. And they were all anywhere from 75 to 100 up to 85 or 90 to one. Well. Uh huh. Any any one of those dogs, if you'd if you'd bet ten dollars on it, you'd have probably uh, pulled in two or three hundred dollars on it. But we had all four of them, and he looked at me and he said, "Well, old buddy," said, "Looks like we got a good one here." Well, we kept waiting, waiting on those. Um, they um. Uh, they had these, uh, another way they had a winning, they manipulated these dogs, see, is these photo finishes. And a photo finish, you usually had to wait sometimes five or 10 minutes. Meanwhile, they're deciding up up in the office which one we should say won, which one would benefit the, the track the most. And I said, I, I'm smelling a mouse, it don't seem right. Well, it finally flashed up there. He said it should have been between 10,000 and 15,000. And they flashed it up 3,500. And he was about your size, Nick, real muscular and all. He said, we ought to go up there Ray, and just clean house. Yeah. Just beat the shit out of all of them. <laughs> I said, no. So <clears throat> we went up there and we split it, we split it. But um, 
and they we were the we were the only only two that went up there as another guy. He was probably making a, a singular bet, you know. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure he didn't have all four of them. Yeah, and that's one of the few times that we would usually I'd pick two to three underdogs, and then one one that I knew was pretty much a cinch, one of the leading dogs to come in. Yeah. But that particular night it was, and they there was two two uh, dogs that ran there that you almost had to bet on. One of them was Cherokee Gold, and the other, I can't think, he was, he bet on the biggest dog out. I mean, I mean he, uh, the biggest, the biggest dog out there was the other one, uh, I can't think. But neither one of them came in. But they had control of those dogs. You'd see them moving along, you know, and they want this one on the inside to win. So they pull this one back enough for him to get in. And then he's making his way over and they pull him back till he gets out in the clear. And then, boy, he's, he's gone. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Now today, with advancement, maybe had technological wise, you can imagine that. But <clears throat> but I was going out there before that even started. They were they were just what you call free running, hoping for the best, mm -hmm. which they can make mo good money that way. Just like in Vegas, blackjack out there for years, just. Uh, the dealer has a certain amount of advantage over you without any help. But today they've got help. You don't see it, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't it surprise you a lot of times all the hell uh, help just like your, just like your phone there. Yeah. And when I was a kid, you couldn't imagine Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you got the one that you can talk back and forth, yeah, you got the best one. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said us too, but I don't even have one. You're okay. That's uh, okay. You don't need it. Don't worry me. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry me a bit. It don't make me, it wouldn't make me any money. Well, you can still get around and you yeah. can still do what you need to do. So if you don't need it, that's okay. 